it over to the guys to finish up for you. And I got to ask this. Uh, I got two left, and they're both probably questions you get tired of getting asked. But it had to be irksome for you guys, and it was irksome for me as a fan because you guys were younger than most of the WCW roster. To be on the WWF TV and have the New Age Outlaws chanting OLD at you guys was that? Were you guys okay with that, or were you frustrated with it? You know, there are certain things in the wrestling business that I call cheap heat. When you get people, when you get the fans that yell at you because you're calling somebody OLD, that is so freaking cheap. It's not even like getting heat. Right. They're not really getting mad at you for beating somebody up. They're getting mad at you for calling somebody old, which is totally ridiculous because. When they were chanting at the time, I was in my 30s. Yeah. Well, I, people, I mean, I'll, people, I'll give you an example. I was at a show, a uh, WWF house show. Fan was chanting OLD at you, and the kid was wearing a Sting shirt. And I'm like, he's younger. Sting's, you know, animal's younger than Whoa, Sting. Whoa, Sting's four <laughs> years older than I am. Maybe <laughs> five years older than I am. You know what I mean? I mean, come on. You know, yeah, that that was kind of the thing. I mean, uh, I even said, hey, listen, man, you're going to get heat on us. Get heat on us by doing something. Power bomb me through the table or something. Don't be chanting the old, old LD or, you know, or the, you know, like the, I don't know, man, like the super soaker thing that they were doing. <clears throat> they were good enough talent. They didn't need to do that cheap stuff. But then again, the, the business went in the age of being dark, per se. Yeah. And that was supposed to be the cool thing to do. And I think by the ratings, they found out that it wasn't the cool thing to do. Yeah, there you go, there you go. Well, man, I've got to tell you, it's been great to have you on, and I know you get tired of getting asked this, but with your brother being the big wig over at the WWE, <laughs> <laughs> I guess uh don't need to ask you, you know, do you have any aspirations whatsoever about being either part of that office or part of the training? <clears throat> Bro, probably for the last, since Hawk has passed away, I made it very clear to the people who work in the WWE office before my brother got hired there, I always had aspirations of I'm a coach. I'm a coach at heart. I love coaching kids. I love coaching the new guys. I was down at FCW, and I feel like I was one of the best coaches there for the big guys, teaching the big guys how to be big guys, mm-hmm. how to be big men. You know, because there's a difference between being a big guy and a little guy, and the, how to sell and attack somebody and everything else. I was down there for about two weeks teaching the guys. I w- it's no secret they know I would love to be a part of that company behind the scenes and being an agent or helping the new product develop, if I, however I can help it. And uh, it's kind of like beating a dead horse at this point. I, I, I've gotten tired of asking. You know, it's, it's it's put a strain on my brother's relationship and my relationship. You know, the fact that I'm to the point now where I'm over it and he's my brother, I love him, and uh, it is what it is. And, uh, hey, I look at it, if they don't hire me, it's their loss, not my loss. Exactly. You know? Because I have the right positive attitude in mind. I'm a company guy. Right. You hire me, I'm going to be a company guy. I'm going to back you up, be the man for you, everything else. <clears throat> but, hey, you know, it is what it is. It hasn't worked out that way. But, you know, it's still, do I still think they're a great company? Absolutely. Yeah. Do I know why I'm not there? No. <laughs> it's, it's pretty much plain and simple that, you know. So yeah. instead, of, instead of dragging it on for you and, and trying to give you a BS answer, I'll just shoot straight with you and say, hey, yeah, it is what it is, man. What can I do? Yeah, I got to be honest. I saw your shoot interview that you did back in 2000, and you know, from watching it, I could tell kind of a little bit about your guys' personality. And you seemed like you were a little bit more business, and Hulk was maybe a little bit more of the loose cannon, especially at that mm-hmm. point in later years. It was I be accurate in saying that? Oh, so totally. <laughs> if you ever to talk to Paul Ellering, he'll tell you, Animal was the rock, and what he meant by that is I was kind of the glue that kept the ship together because part of the ship always wanted to sail a different way. Mm-hmm. And and I would keep Hawk, you know, pretty much zoned in and where we need to go and everything else, especially after Paul decided to retire. Yeah. And when, you know, when, when all that was said and done, I mean, you know, heck, Hawk's gone. I, I think I've, I've been a great businessman over the years. I've never burnt any bridges, never pissed off any promoters, certainly haven't pissed off Vince or anybody else. Um, all I want to do is help a company and help them make money. If that's not good enough, well, then, bro, it's not good enough. What can I say? Here you go. All righty, man. Well, the book is out now, and it looks like it's getting a lot of attention from the Internet fans. And you know what? I hope it gets more attention from the mainstream fans, too, because this book looks like it, it just is an amazing package. As you said, it's put together really nicely. You know, the stories in it are priceless. You know, it's not just wrestling. It also tells a little bit about the guys that maybe we didn't get a chance to know as much uh, on the screen because you guys were just, you know, big, rough, tough, smash mouth style. A little bit more about you guys, and I think everybody wanted to know a little bit more about you guys back then. And 
I well, that was the thing, man. There was always a mystique about the Road Warriors in that era of the business, you know. I, and, I, and I get in and I talk about uh, Nikita and what his real name was and, you know, different things like that and how he personified himself. And, you know, <clears throat> it's a great story. You don't have to be a wrestling fan to love. That's the greatest thing I thought what we've been blessed with in this wrestling business. You may not have heard of the Road Warriors or Legion of Doom, but you've seen our picture somewhere. Because we we were one of the, we were one of the deals that crossed over. We we have been in People magazine. We have been in Us magazine. We've been in Sports Illustrated. We've been in the, the popular mainstreams, Muscle Fitnesses, everything else. So T-shirts you know, and all that. Oh, I, you know. I see those guys somewhere. You know what I mean? So I mean, it's it, it and believe me, it, you, like you said, it's a, it's a good book, and uh, it, Amazon's got it like number fourteen on the top one hundred sports autobiographies right now, which I think is amazing since it just came out like a day ago. Exactly. So I'm happy with it, man. And I thanks guys like you helping me push the book and promote it. Uh, you know, I, I appreciate it immensely, and it's a pleasure to be on your guys' show. Well, I'll tell you what. Anytime you oh, ever want you. to do anything again. With us, you're always welcome on. Anytime you have any press releases, let us know. We'll post it on our wrestling website newsline. And, you know, anything we could do for you, man, we appreciate your time. And I, I told you off the air, I'll tell you now, it's an honor to have you on. Like I said, I don't know how we never crossed paths in eight years, but um, I'm glad we finally did. Yeah, me too, man. Thanks a lot. Thanks, man. This has been Road Warrior Animal here on Interactive Wrestling Radio. Man, are you still with me? Yeah, I am, bro. Hey, can I ask one last favor from you? Yeah, go ahead, man. Hey, could, uh, we're getting back into uh, doing it kind of the uh, the old FCC style. I just wanted to see, could you possibly give us a little, I apologize for the sound of my voice, by the way, I've been sick all week. <clears throat> uh, could you possibly give us a liner, basically just saying, hey, this is Road Warrior Animal, and you're listening to Interactive Wrestling Radio? Yeah, sure. All right. And I'll hit record in five, four, three, two. Hey. This is Road Warrior Animal, and you are listening to Interactive Wrestling Radio. Oh, what a rush. Awesome, man. Thanks so much. I really appreciate your time. Bros, that's why the top guys are the top guys. <laughs> and you don't need practice to get in. You know, I tell you, we didn't get to get in on the air. You know, the one thing they called us all the time, and you probably read in a book, was the One Cut Kids. One cut kids, yeah, they did. Yeah, that's true. I know. I mean, because we ever we did an interview or anything else, we're the road warriors. Oh, great! We'll get we'll get fifteen interviews. We'll get them done in ten minutes. Or other guys, and I hate to say, you get guys like Sting, and it take you two hours to get a promo done. Oh yeah. Well, what was great about you guys is you'd say something, and you'd say, "Tell them Hawk," and Hawk would mumble something about pus and all that, and then what a rush, and you guys were done. So it was it was perfect. <laughs> I know. I, I know, man. Well, thanks, guys. You guys have a good night, man. There you go. That's all you, you have, do. man. I really appreciate it, and thank you for giving us so much of your time. No problem, bro.